Hi there, how are you going? Welcome to the latest edition of the Simic Report. We're into the month of August, powering into the second half of the calendar year. So we'll stick with tradition. We're going to dive straight into property management. We'll come back over to sales to finish it off. So Bernadette, what's been happening? Well, what a last few months it's actually been. And beginning of um, August now, um, we are finding that we are getting multiple applications on a lot of our properties. So we are um, having a lot of tenants out there um, looking to um, find a property to rent, which is really good if you're a landlord that's got your property on the market at the moment. Um, it does definitely help um, the days on market. So it does reduce that as well. We're also finding, um, with our lease renewals that a lot of te tenants are, um, are wanting um, a shorter lease term, whether it's a periodic or a six month lease, um, because obviously the uncertainty of everything going on. So we are taking each day, day by day and making the most of it. Um, so it's just, you know, it is definitely a, a positive um, outcome of how things are looking so far. And that obviously we're not dealing with what Victoria is going through. Yeah, very challenging for, uh, for them in stage four. Yep. Um, we're obviously very much a different state, but a very different um, climate that we're dealing with yeah. at the moment. So, um, with uh, I suppose we'll, do, we'll jump straight back over yeah. to sales. Um, it's interesting because we talk about what we what Victoria is going through and what we're going through now. Sort of ties into what I was uh, going to say, which is just proves that this wasn't a, a pre-planned discussion, but. You know, I refer to, um, if you look back, you know, and hopefully you do watch our videos, you go back and watch the May edition, you'll see that I referred to market conditions and buyer speculation in the sales space. Um, the media was heavily touting, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50% price drops in real estate within the coming months. Yep. We're now into the month of August. It hasn't come to fruition, which is exactly what we said it would do. Um, it was underpinned, or that media commentary, which the buyers were hoping would come to fruition, was underpinned by JobKeeper ending in September and also bank deferrals also ending in September yep. as well. So a lot of people were referring to it as a financial cliff. Obviously, with both aspects, JobKeeper, as they're calling it, JobKeeper 2.0, has now been extent, extended to March and then will phase down even further. Yep. And then obviously with the bank deferrals, they've also extended their period. So we've basically avoided that September financial cliff. And because of that, we're not hearing any media commentary at the moment of these significant price drops, no. which the buyers no longer have that uh, ability to use as leverage of what is or could be seen as a, as a fire sale or a desperate sale. So property prices have held and they've been very, very stable. Interestingly, like I mentioned in the May video, and I reported the July, you know, financial year sales, high sales for each suburb that we look after here in the Inner East, the values have continued to stay quite buoyant. And in a lot of instances, maybe it's probably just we're marketing, but I dare say it's quite um, similar across the board. There are multiple properties getting multiple offers. Yep. Our days on market uh, are in line with uh, a very strong selling year of last year you would be full thinking that COVID is actually taking place at the moment mm. in the sales arena. Yep. There is definitely a shortage of stock, no question of that. One of the biggest questions that I'm having at the moment is either through our landlords, or the properties that we manage. So if you are one of our landlords, I hope this information does come through and sort of save us having the same discussion later on in the piece, because it is one that I have been repeating a lot lately. And there is also a number of clients that we do not manage properties for that have asked me to look at their property and appraise it for selling with the eye of maybe selling it, because they've also realized that that financial cliff isn't happening, but maybe they're preparing themselves for maybe this time to move the investment property. Yep. That question is, is we're thinking about selling, is now the best time to do it? Market conditions, as I've just said, we're not being impacted by COVID. So to answer the first question, no. Has COVID affected the real estate market? Yes, so it does contradict itself. Where it has impacted the property market is who your buyer pool is. Mm. Predominantly, so if we talk pre-COVID, now let's refer to it as post-COVID. Pre-COVID, if you had a typical residential house, three or four bedroom house versus a unit or townhouse, if you had a house, your buyer pool would have been made up of about 70 to 80% owner occupiers, 20 to 30% investors if you owned a unit or a townhouse your buyer pool is probably more split 50 50 uh, owner occupiers versus investors the only thing COVID has done has definitely put some concern in the investor market yeah 
and that is how many buyers are in today's market investors. I can tell you now, the data that I've seen and I've experienced in the cold face at the front doors with inquiries coming in, buyers are meeting at inspections, it's somewhere in the mid to high 90s are owner occupiers. There are very, very few investors in the market. Now they are there, but compared to last year, a significant drop. Yep. So if you now look at the, the buy pool that I mentioned before, 70 to 80% of owner-occupied properties, uh, pro uh, houses are owner-occupied buyers, you've got an invest, if you've got a tenant in that property on an extended lease, and when I say extended, plus three months, your chances of selling that property significantly diminish because yep. your buyer pool, 90% of it, is gone. If you have an investment type of property, a three bedroom townhouse or a two bedroom unit, more than half of your buyer pool is gone yep. because there just simply aren't investors there to sell it to. And that's the only buyer you can sell it to because it has a tenant in place. So the short answer is if you are considering selling your property, the strongest advice that we give you is without a tenant in place, i.e. vacant. That's where you need to tie in your conversations. We manage your property with Bernadette and the team with a, about the preparation stage and how much notice needs to be given to the tenant. Yep. Now, I understand a property without a tenant in place is a loss of income. So if you go on a $500 a week property, it's taking about one to four weeks to sell a property. So let's say four weeks. That's $2,000 lost in rental income. I understand that. And not everyone has the financial capacity to be able to afford to keep a property vacant and lose $2,000. The difference in your sale price if you try to sell it with a tenant is five to 10%. So if you're looking at the medium price in our marketplace of say seven to $800,000 for a property, you're looking at a difference of $35 to $70,000 less in your sale price if you try to sell it with your tenant. So compare that with $2,000 of lost income. Which difference. would you rather have? Yeah. Now I understand financially, sometimes you must have that tenant in place. Unfortunately, that's the circumstances they are as they are. But it is important to understand what will get you a better sale price, which is what my job is to do, is your net walk away figure. That's the advice that I've been giving to owners that are considering selling a property. That is an investment property. Speaking of owners selling investment properties or, or landlords, one thing Bernadette is definitely not going to take a rap for and she doesn't know that this is coming. The work that her and her property management team have done over the last three to six months tackling the challenges of COVID and the lack of framework and the challenges dealing with tenants that are either genuinely affected by COVID or not uh, has been immense. It has been, uh, is, is for the owners that have reached out, our landlords and have thanked her personally and the gifts, we really appreciate that. It goes a long way. The guys have put in countless hours, long nights, uh, no sleep through nights working through to just make sure that our landlords are looked after in the face of adversity and, and times that we've not uh, seen before. So uh, an immense job by the PM team here in the business, um, underpinned and, and driven by Bernadette leading that team. So an absolute well, uh, job well done. Uh, hopefully we don't have the challenges moving forward like Victoria does yeah. and we've seen the back of that. But if it does come, we're ready for it. We know how to tackle it, but at the moment it's business as usual. Yeah. And uh, I'll stop talking now. It's a longer version of the Civic Report. But guys, we, have a, we look forward to seeing you in the September edition. We'll see you then. Thank you. Cheers.